This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Tesla is planning a significant expansion to its Gigafactory in Nevada. The EV maker is investing $3.6 billion to build two new facilities at the site. One will be to produce the semi in volume production, but it did not say what the capacity will be. And the other is a 100 gigawatt hour 4680 battery cell factory which will be able to produce enough batteries for one and a half million light duty vehicles a year. The expansion will add around 3,000 new jobs as well. And since 2014, Tesla has invested $6.2 billion in the Nevada Gigafactory, and that doesn't include this new investment. And in other Tesla news, this should help out with sales. Thanks to its price cuts, all variations of the Model 3 and Y now qualify for maximum tax incentives in Germany, 6,750 euros or about 7,000 bucks. And like the US, Germany has price caps on EVs to qualify for the incentives. Factoring in both the cuts and credits, the Model 3 now costs just over 40,000 euros and the Y is just over 41,000. Tesla is currently building 3,000 Model Ys a week at its Berlin factory and it's aiming to boost that to 5,000 soon. Instead of Ford using Volkswagen's MEB platform for EVs, it looks like it could be the other way around. The head of VW's commercial division says an EV pickup, like the ID Ruggeds concept, is quote, still on the agenda. But instead of being MEB based, it would share a platform with the current Ford Ranger, which is also the base for the Volkswagen Amarok although it will need a fair amount of modification to go electric. Sounds like Ford will handle most of that work, and it would require at least a 110 kilowatt hour battery pack to provide enough towing and range. VW likely won't bring its version of this truck to the US. It's got Scout for that. But as we reported yesterday, Nissan is likely developing a midsize electric pickup, and we've gotta believe, so are the other major truck makers. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Schaeffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. The auto industry is doing a good job of reducing greenhouse gases that goes beyond just making electric vehicles. Take the seat supplier Adiant, for example. Last year, it slashed its use of water by 16 million liters. It cut 25 kilowatt hours equivalent of fuel. It got rid of 5,363 metric tons of waste and cut its electricity waste by 42 million kilowatt hours and it also cut over 6,000 metric tons of CO2e. So what the heck is CO2e? We had to look that up as well. And it stands for CO2 equivalent, and it includes other greenhouse gases. BMW is launching the high-performance version of the M3, the CS, which stands for Competition Sport. It comes with a similar engine as the M3, a twin-turbo 3-liter inline six-cylinder, But thanks to higher boost pressure and a software tune, it produces 543 horsepower, an increase of 40 horsepower. That's fed through an 8-speed automatic and standard all-wheel drive, which helps get the M3 CS from 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds. One of the upgrades we'd like to highlight is the brace over the engine. It's much more elaborate than your typical strut tower brace, also extending forward to the radiator surround, and it's meant to help improve handling and responsiveness, as will specially tuned electronic dampers and roll bars, carbon ceramic brakes, unique alignment settings and steering ratio, as well as high performance tires. And the CS has its own unique look too, including special treatment to the grill, aero accessories, and sport seats backed in carbon fiber, which is also picked up on other parts of the interior as well. 
production of the M3CS, which kicks off in March, will be limited and prices start at a shade under $120,000, including destination charges. If you didn't know, Lucid, the maker of the all-electric air sedan, also provides the battery pack for the all-electric Formula E racing series. And now it's supplying the electric drive units as well. Mounted in the front of every Formula E car this season is the new Lucid unit, which combines the motor, inverter, differential, and transmission all into one. It's said to have 469 horsepower and can spin up to 19,500 RPM, despite weighing just 70 and a half pounds or 32 kilos. Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson says, quote, Some of the technical advancements introduced may in turn make their way to future Lucid road cars. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. As we reported yesterday, Ford is planning to shrink its footprint in Europe by cutting 3,200 jobs, mostly in Germany. And now the Wall Street Journal reports that Ford could sell one of its plants in Germany to Chinese automaker BYD. Ford executives will travel to China this month to discuss a potential deal, but it's not known how much Ford is seeking for the plant. BYD has been slowly ramping up its presence in Europe and last year, it said it's considering a plant in the region, so it would make sense why it would be interested in the Ford plant. Other companies are also reportedly interested in acquiring that plant too. The factory, which opened in 1970, currently only builds the Focus, and Ford plans to end production there in 2025. Aftermarket EV tires are better than the ones from the factory. It's typically the other way around, but according to tests done by Tire Rack, which sells and tests tires among other things, aftermarket tires for the long-range version of the Tesla Model 3 outperform the ones that originally came on the car. Specifically, it tested the Continental and Michelin tires that come on the EV and compared them to aftermarket alternatives from the same manufacturers. And in both cases, the aftermarket tires provided better traction, braking, and lateral grip and the braking improvements were especially impressive, reducing braking distance by one to two car lengths. And it goes to show that tires can make a huge difference on EVs. As we reported in the past, switching from aggressive tires, like the ones that come on the Rivian R1T from the factory, to less aggressive tires can have a big impact on range. Could automakers ever develop new cars and trucks without making a prototype? That's the goal of a company called VI-Grade, Zero Prototypes. They make driving simulators that allow engineers to test out cars and components in the virtual world before they ever have to make any hardware. And this approach is slashing the time it takes to develop new vehicles. And this is going to be the topic on AutoLine After Hours tomorrow. Michael Hoffman from VI-Grade will be on the show. So will Lindsey Brook from SAE Engineering. So join John and Gary when the show goes live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.